Hi, my name is Rini McGregor. I'm a sports dietitian. My area of specialisms is REDS, which is Relative Energy Deficiency Syndrome, female athlete, eating disorders in sport, and also general athlete performance. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about the microbiome and elite performance. There's lots of new evidence emerging to suggest that the microbiome can actually have an impact on our performance. While studies are still novel and innovative, we are seeing some definite correlations between the diversity of the microbiome and also the impact it can have on your performance, including an improved performance. One of the difficulties we have when working with elite athletes, particularly runners, is that there is a condition called runner's trots or gastrointestinal distress. And a lot of that can actually be to do with not only the intensity at which you're running at, but also to do with your microbiome and your diet. What we know is the microbiome is affected by diet, exercise, lifestyle and sleep, as well as our genetics. So it can be complicated because no two athletes are going to have the same microbiome. So trying to compare to see what's going to be the most efficient and effective is quite complicated. Now, when it comes to GI distress in athletes, one of the common aspects is that the microbiome may be actually affected by very high intensity exercise. So we know that endurance exercise in particular can sometimes have a negative impact on our microbiome if we are not fueling particularly well. So energy availability is really, really critical and ensuring that you're getting the right diet to enhance your microbiome while also exercising at a high intensity is going to be critical. So foods like fruit, vegetables, legumes, whole grains are really, really important. However, we also know combining that diet with running can sometimes lead to little mishaps when we're out running. So what can we do? We have to think about the timing and also the amount of food that we're taking around our training. Another area that you need to be mindful of is actually your hydration levels. So what a lot of people don't realize is that if you become dehydrated, then the concentration in your stomach of food, including high fiber foods, is gonna become very, very intense. And this is often one of the causes of the body wanting to basically get rid of what's in the stomach. So timing your nutrition in terms of making sure that you've given yourself enough time to digest before you go out to train, whatever that training is, is gonna be important. Thinking about what you actually put in in that, in that time frame. While we definitely want a diet that is diverse and full of variety, including lots of different colors of vegetables, whole grains, legumes, we also need to make sure that we don't overdo the fiber content. So a good choice before training would be something like a bagel because it doesn't have the high fiber content, but it still has the carbohydrate availability that is really important for your performance. Now, again, making sure that you're hydrated is really key. One of the things to be mindful of is that when we train, whatever the sport we're doing is, there's going to be a removal of blood flow from the stomach to your working muscles. And this is why if the content of your stomach is high in fiber, very concentrated because of dehydration, again, this is why the body then wants to remove it from the stomach. So one of the key nutrients needed for good athletic performance is carbohydrate. Now, ideally, these need to be complex carbohydrates, but in some cases, we will also need simple carbohydrates in the form of sugar, whether that's a, a sports drink or whether that's a, um, a gel, and that will depend on the duration of your, your performance. So if you're doing an event that's over 90 minutes, you're definitely gonna need to make sure that you are fueling during that event as well. Again, a lot of people shy away from this because they find that if they take on nutrition during a run, this is when often their stomach becomes a problem. Now, some good tips, again, going back to making sure you're hydrated is really important. Thinking about your nutrition in the 24 to 36 hours before your longer performance. Also, making sure that you're not taking down nutrition during an event quickly. So a common mistake that people make is taking something like an energy gel and just taking it in one go. And actually what you should be doing is taking that slowly, maybe over the course of about five minutes, and that will really help to improve your absorption of the glucose and help you to maintain your pace that you're trying to keep. The other thing to remember is to actually train the gut. Again, so many athletes I work with will avoid using food during their training and then get to race day and need to take on nutrition, but actually find that this is when they get problems because they haven't trained their gut to actually take on nutrition when they need it. 
So let's go back to some really key nutritional points for elite athletes. Firstly, they need to be thinking about tailoring their nutrition to their training load. So that means ahead of long training sessions and high intensity training sessions, they need to be really thinking about carbohydrate availability before, during and after. What do I mean by carbohydrate availability? I mean making sure that they are taking on fuel that provides them with carbohydrate that then can be available to the muscles when they are training. So good options will include things like bagels, porridge, pasta, rice, potatoes, bread, quinoa, couscous, and to a certain degree, fruits and vegetables as well. However, we have to be careful because sometimes when we overload the system with fruit and vegetables, in this case, one, it can displace the amount of complex carbohydrate that you take on board, but also can almost provide too much fiber, particularly in the run up to a race or a longer session, which as we've seen beforehand, can actually be problematic to the gut when you're actually performing. The other thing that we have to be careful about when we're racing is obviously your hydration levels. All of these things together are what makes an elite athlete good at what they do. Thinking about their diet, making sure that they are getting a lot of diversity because we know that the diversity in nutrition is what helps them to have a diverse microbiome. Now, as I said right at the beginning, we are starting to see studies emerging that show that actually an athlete's diet is really good in terms of helping that athlete with their microbiome and also potentially their performance, but we still need more longitudinal studies to see the exact impact the microbiome can have on performance. What we do know though, is that whatever happens in the microbiome, not only is it transient, but it's also reversible. So it's, it's worth keeping an eye on an athlete's diet to make sure that actually it is always optimal to help them not only with their performance, but also their health. Five quick takeaways to maintain athletic performance. One, make sure that you have a diverse variety of foods going into your diet. Two, don't displace carbohydrate with fruits and vegetables, but also make sure that you do get plenty of colors when you do eat fruits and vegetables. Three, think about the timing of your nutrition, making sure you have good carbohydrate availability before, during, in long sessions, and immediately after. These are all really important, not just for your microbiome, but also to ensure good recovery and to help with adaptation to your training. Four, don't forget to hydrate. Hydration is so important. A dehydrated gut is not a happy gut. And five, overall, make sure that you get good sleep as well. These are really, all these things are really important in ensuring that you have a good optimal microbiome. So guys, that's just a real taster of the importance of the microbiome and elite performance. Like I said, there's still a lot more work that is needed, but you're starting to understand that the diets taken on by athletes make a really big impact, not only on their health, but also their performance. <laughs>